On today's title unboxed, we will be joined by a two-time WBC super middleweight champion who held the title in 2014 through 2015 and again in 2019. He is a man who is a survivor on many levels, some of which we'll cover in this conversation. Please welcome to the program, the pride of Flint, Michigan, Anthony Durrell. Welcome to Title Unboxed. With more than 40 years of experience in the fight game, our host, Doug Ward, will be covering every corner of the ring as we get comfortable between the ropes. We'll talk with both the lesser knowns and the legends, discuss boxing's rich history and current state of the game. We'll also look at today's latest innovations, equipment breakdowns, and insights you won't uncover anywhere else. Join us now as we take a look inside Title Unboxed. Anthony, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, well, Thanks see, for having me. My pleasure. Well, thanks. I see you have uh, you and uh, Caleb Plant are going back and forth a little bit right now, trying to make something uh, happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, start? if he want to make something happen, it's, uh, I mean, I've been called Caleb. He knows that. Uh, it just, he can uh, muster up enough uh, courage to sign the, the contract. You know, I, I saw you say that you have a, a genuine distaste for him. Where, you don't like you. Where, where's that come from? I mean, nobody likes him. Uh, Canelo didn't like him. The last time when he fought Canelo, Canelo never acted like that before. Uh, Benavides don't like him. It's a lot of fighters that don't like him. And it, it, it's the way he carries himself outside the ring. I'm not, so, I'm not saying you're supposed to carry yourself like everybody wants you to, but you, know, you carry yourself as a professional. And he's just not professional. Uh, he's just a butthole, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't like him. I mean, you can't get mad that I don't like a person. Yeah. I mean, I'm not jealous of him. I'm not, I'm nothing. I just don't like him. Uh, it's cool to not like people. Right. Well, what do you see from him as a fighter in the ring? What, how would you assess him? And we might go through a couple of the I mean, other guys, a, but start with him. He's a, he's a good fighter. He's a good boxer. Let's say that, uh, I think he likes a little power, of course, uh, but he's a definitely a good boxer. He got ring, good ring uh, IQ or whatnot, but that can all be defeated. Uh, I was uh, did an interview yesterday. Uh, I uh, I was boxing one of the one of the best boxers, really at 168. You know, when I was growing up in my time, that's my brother. I mean, he was yeah. fast, quick. Yeah. He was elusive. So uh, Caleb Plant. Uh, I think he's as fast as he was, and my brother was for yeah. sure. What about a couple other guys in your division? How about David Benavides? He's <clears> right <throat> in that mix. He's he's calling Caleb out at the same time, and I haven't seen him mention your name. But what do you think of that that potential matchup? Uh, I, he probably haven't mentioned my name because he beat me. I mean, and, and you know, he beat me because of a cut. Yeah. Uh, but David Benavides is a champion, and I said that multiple times. I say he's a he he is a good champion. Uh, he he fought for you know, to get the title twice and you got to have respect for that. Uh, but he's a good guy too, in general, yeah. uh, his family is uh, something like my family. So, you know, I can respect that. And, uh, he's he just a good guy. He's a good guy outside the ring. You know, when they get in the ring, we, we all know it's business sure. and that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, but I can't say nothing bad about Ben Yeah. The other guy that's out there knocking on doors is, uh, Demetrius Andrade. What do you think of him as a, as a fighter? Uh, he hasn't fought. He has a. He, he's a good fighter. I mean, obviously, to I guess a lot of people are, uh, is avoiding him, but that's at one sixty. I think he moved up at a sixty eight. Now I'm not even too for sure, hmm. but uh, you know, sixty eight is different animals. Yeah. Well, you mentioned your brother right out the gates. I mean, you talk about some great built-in sparring. What are some of the di dynamics you 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 encounter growing up as brothers in the sport and uh, competing in similar weight classes? Uh, just just being able to compete at a higher level every day in, in the boxing and in, in training in general, you know, he pushes me, I pushes him, mm -hmm. and it's just it goes vice versa like that. Uh, when you can have somebody like that in house, it, it just yeah. makes you better. Yeah, like I say that that built in sparring's a, a, a great thing <laughs> for sure, especially for at sure. that level from a Olympian, yeah. you know. For sure. Yeah. Well, you come from a place that's got a pretty good history of boxing, you know. Before your brother, there was uh, uh, the Bird family, Chris, mm -hmm. Tracy, Patrick. Oh. 
Yeah. 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 How familiar with the, were you with them and how did they kind of influence your idea besides your brother that, wow, this is attainable. A world champion can come uh, from Flint, Michigan. Right. Uh, we, we, we used to box at their gym uh, on Dewey Street and on, they had a gym on Corona Road. Uh, so we know the bird very well uh, still to this day. But it's, uh, I mean, seeing Chris going to his fights and then winning yeah. championships, uh, it, it motivated us both, me and my brother, to to want to keep going and pursue, you know, those championship dreams. And we accomplished that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you spar in their little, what was it, little eight by 10 ring? I did. I did. And, <laughs> it, and, and it's tough. It's hot up there. The heat is like blowing right there on the ring and stuff too. So it, it it's a pretty, like, if you go in that gym, you're going to war. It's not boxing. Yeah. Like you can't, you can't skate your way around that <laughs> ring. You have to fight. There, there's no escapee, right? No, you That's can't. Funny. You have to fight. So how'd you, how'd you get involved? I mean, your brother started first, obviously, but, um, you know, who brought you into the gym for the first time and, and how that, how did that, how'd you really get, create a love for the sport of boxing? Well, we started around the same time. Yeah. Uh, I think we had our fights at the, at the same time, uh, my, or he had his a week before mine, but we both about started around the same time. Uh, I was nine, he was 10 years old. So, uh, but it was just my grandfather, mm -hmm. uh, him boxing with Muhammad Ali, you know, training with Muhammad Ali. It was, you know, he passed that down to us. So I, I'm very grateful and all everything that I have to that man. Yeah. What an amazing learning experience to learn to get yeah. some of the basics from that. Give me, give me a couple of examples of things he, he passed on to you that he'd learned while, you know, in, in Ali's shadow. Uh, just a, a, a hard work ethic, uh, just staying focused and working hard and being dedicated to what's at, what's at stake. You know, you got to take, you got to have, a. Uh, you can't get to where you got to have a, uh, you got to make sacrifices mm -hmm. to be where you want to be. And yeah. that's in everything. That's just not in box. That's in everything that you do. Even a nine to five, if you, if you want to make it to the top and be CEO, you know, you make sacrifices and do the things that you don't want to do. Exactly. That's what he used to tell us every day. You do things that you don't want to do so you can get somewhere you want to be. And he was your primary trainer along with your, your uncle, right? Yep. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my uncle came later in, in yeah. the time. My uncle came uh, in our professional career, but my grandfather was the majority, the guy, the, guy, the head trainer. Yeah. I, mean, I think I remember you back from the Silver Gloves. I coordinated the Silver Gloves tournament from, what was it, around, God, I'm trying to think here, it was around 96 to 2002. Did yeah, you, I was you, probably there. Yeah. I was and, probably what, there. <laughs> and what a, what a crew of fighters back then. I mean, you had Curtis Stevens, Andre Ward, uh, Kelly Pavlik, Timothy Bradley, uh, I mean, Williams. Ricardo Williams. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. a lot of them. I, I think Rock he was... and Tiger. Yeah. 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 It was a whole lot of them. I mean, even them guys, you know, motivated us to keep going and yeah. showed us so many things. Uh, just, just being around them guys, you know, you learn things from different boxers, uh, that you can't learn in the ring because it's, it's kind of the same thing. But right. once you get around different people, you learn different things and it just, it just elevates you even higher. Yeah. Well, getting tested at such a, such a high caliber of, t of talented fighters, skillful and, you know, hardworking, tough. Yeah. 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 And that's what you, that's what you need in, in this sport. Uh, you need toughness. You need grit. You need to be in an uncomfortable situation to, to, to be on top for sure. I, I guarantee you a lot of people have been uncomfortable uh, before they could became champion for sure. Yeah. And well, another guy that was in that mix was, uh, Anthony Henshaw, who you yep. ended up fighting later I, I on. Fought, yep. Yeah. I did fight him. Yep. I fought him. I be, I think my brother fought him too. Yeah. My brother fought him too. Uh, yep. I made a bet with him. I said, I bet I stopped him before you, you, did. <laughs> you got him in I three, did. right? I got him in one. I thought it was, was it three? I don't know how many it was. It might've been three. I don't, I don't know. know. I forgot. I got, I beat him faster than he right beat around him. there. Yeah. I quick. beat him faster than he beat him. Yeah. So I got a question for you. You look at guys like you mentioned Ricardo Williams, um, you know, five times silver gloves champion. He's the first guy to do it. Then you got a guy like Anthony Hanshaw, a highly decorated amateur. And then you take you guys, Andre Ward, Timothy Bradley. Some of these guys are not able to make that transition to the pros from the amateurs to the pros. Mm -hmm. 
successfully. What do you think it is about a you, an Andre Ward, uh, an Andre Durrell, that, that they're able to make that jump successfully where others can't? Uh, just staying motivated to the task. Uh, we wanted to do it. You know, people see that first big check and, you know, get the big head and think yeah. they don't have to work out or do do things, but you have to. You have to stay motivated. Uh, if you got something that you want to stay motivated from to, then you keep pushing to that to that uh, to that goal. Uh, I wanted to be world champion, and I became world champion. That was the that was the goal. So I'm I'm still pushing. I'm still fighting right now. So that's yeah. the goal. I'm still motivated to fight. And you turned pro back in two uh, two thousand two thousand five two thousand five. And again, who was yep. that against? Uh, Hawk- Henry Dukes. Henry Dukes. What do you remember about Henry that Dukes. fight? Just because that's I kind remember. of a, a momentous I, occasion, making that transition. Yeah, just, I remember it vividly. I remember my first fight. It was in Baltimore, Maryland. It was at a ballroom. Uh, first fight. Uh, I heard it. I, I think I dislocated his shoulder. I think I hit him in, like in the back of the shoulder oh, yeah. and dislocated so he couldn't move it. But so my instincts was to just hop on them. Like you gotta, you see something injured and you go to it yeah. and you keep going until he's down. And that's what I did. And then they popped it back into place and then it popped right back out of place. And, and I, he couldn't do nothing. I stopped him. I yeah. think it was in the first round. Yeah. Fine. So from there you went on like an 11 fight win streak, right? Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. um, you encounter something kind of unexpected after the fight, after that fight with, um, uh, James Hawkins, Hopkins. Is it start- James Hopkins or uh, it might James Hopkins, yeah, James Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, after that yeah. fight, you, you'd felt a little bit, um, you had some maybe chest pains or something during training, but you didn't really address yeah. it. And think there was something wrong until afterwards. So, so it talks about this because this is, it's a great overcoming, uh, trials and tribulation story that, you know, not many people would be able to make it through. Yep. Uh, so I was actually in Vegas getting ready for a fight. My brother fought at the Playboy Mansion. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a fight I was getting ready for also. Uh, and I couldn't, like, it was one time we got up to go run and my chest started hurting. So, you know, I stopped, of course, uh, just being cautious and everything because you don't want to mess with anything by your heart. Mm-hmm. Uh and didn't think nothing of it. So we went to the gym later on. I think it was at noon, Las Vegas time. Uh, and it started hurting again. And I, like I say, I sat down and whatnot, just didn't train that day. Brother still trained. And then my brother got back to the house that we were staying at. He said, if, if your chest hurts again, we're going to uh, go to the doctor. So we went to Target, I think it was, and for sure I'm walking down the aisle, my chest started hurting again. So we went to the doc, we went to the hospital, emergency room. They took x-rays and stuff and they said it could be one or two things. It could be cancerous or tumor, a oh, tumor. That's scary to So hear. I flew, yep, it is, it is. Yeah. Especially at a young age like that when my career is at its, at its pinnacle rising right. and stuff. Uh, oh. But. So I flew home. I think it was that night. I don't think I waited till the next day. I think I flew home that night Mm -hmm. and got home. I think the week later or the next couple of days, I went to go have a biopsy. And they took the pieces out, went through my ribs and whatnot. And they said it is cancer. So they said I can do one or two things. I can either have my chest cut open or I can go through chemotherapy and radiation. So I'm not, well, I don't want anybody messing with my chest. So I say I, I'm more like I could beat chemo and radiation. Right. So I did the chemo and radiation. It, and that's the toughest thing I ever had to do in my life. Really? Seriously. That's, I couldn't, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't. I would just let it run its course. Oh, geez. So what was the most difficult part about that? Just being there, it, it make you sick. It make it, it seemed like it make it worse. Uh, which of course it don't obviously because I'm here, but it just seems like it is the medicine is so strong. It just make you sick for the next three days or however long. But like I say, if I had to do it again, I would just let cancer run. I wouldn't do it. I just let it run in course. Wow. That's amazing. I couldn't, man. I couldn't, I I don't think I could. And and mentally I probably could and everything, but I, I just wouldn't do it. Wow. 
So you continued to train throughout that that time, though, right? On some I level? did. I ran every. I ran every now and then. Yep. Uh, was still running when it got towards the end of my uh, chemo and radiation session. I was training a lot more, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what I said. I know I can still do it. I know I can beat these. You know, the world champions. That was then, but uh, uh, it was uh, and came back. It was tough. It wasn't yeah. easy. I got knocked down a fight that I came back. I still got the video of that fight, but I got knocked down. And uh, it was, you know, people couldn't expect me to be the same fighter that I was right. before cast. And uh, just getting back in there, getting the cobs lives out of me. Yeah. So at what point during that two, it was a two-year layoff pretty much, right? Yep. So what point during that two-year layoff did you kind of turn the corner and go, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna be back in the ring and I'm going to, I can still do something here? Uh, closer to the end, six months before it ended. Uh, with when when I was going through chemo, I really wasn't even thinking about boxing. Of course, I was missing it, but mm -hmm. that wasn't my main focus. My main focus was to get through this and survive, uh, and I did that. Yeah. Uh, just a, live, a living testimony right here, man. Yeah, wow. I'm happy to be here. It's amazing. Good for you. Oh, thank you. Well, we would have missed out on a lot of good fights too, selfishly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then yeah, after that, sure. you, you a whole went, bunch of good fights. I know. We'll. For you too. So after that, you went on, I think, another eleven or twelve fight win streak. Um, and might have been right after that. Then you were getting into title contention, right? Yeah, I yeah. wasn't. I was the. I was. I was a uh, mandatory for the WBC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that fight happened. Close fight, but I got to a motorcycle accident. Oh, that happened that, before though. that, didn't it? Yeah, I got to a motorcycle so accident. I fought Renee St. Juice, and I was mandatory after that. Then I got wow. into the motorcycle accident. I forgot uh, that happened before. That. Yeah. Yeah, it happened before the title shot. I mean, at that point, you got to be going, why me? <laughs> what is going on yeah. here? And, 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 you know, when I think about it, I, like, I'm still here, so I get to talk about it sure. and, and tell my story. But it, it it's, uh, you know, I, I never said why me. Because I know God put things in your way that he knows you can overcome. Yeah. And he knew I could overcome. He knew I was strong enough to do that. And I did that. And it, it's just a story to tell how, how great God is. I mean, how he puts you through things and, and makes you stronger and makes you yeah. think about a lot of things that you do or change a lot of things that you're doing, man. And, and like I said, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, people ask me if I can change anything. What would I change? Nothing. Yeah. Not even that I had cancer, not motorcycle, nothing. I wouldn't change nothing because if that was, if that if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah. So, what did that do to you as a fighter? Do you think if you had not had cancer, if you had not broken your leg, and I think your arm broken too, right? Mm -hmm. what, how would the, how did that really affect you as a fighter in, in retrospect, going back? Uh, I mean, positive and I, negative, I mean, both both ways, right? Right, yeah. right. Uh, I, I don't know, like because you put things are put in a place where they fall. I mean, blocks may not fall the way you want them to fall, but you got to keep pursuing and get over the hump and get to that next block or that next chapter. And I did that, so. For me to say it, what if, and what if, I'll be saying what if to a lot of things, but like, I think I would have had a title shot way sooner, of course, because I was mandatory, but I think I would have had a title way sooner. I right. think I would have, uh, I think I, I people, a lot, a lot of more people would know this story that I'm telling you now about everything that happened to me, because a lot of people don't, Right. they don't know my story. They don't know I had cancer. I mean, you might say it every now and then, but. This should be national. This should be Sports Center. Even when I won a title, I talked to Sports Center. Well, I didn't talk to them. Somebody else represented me and talked to them, and they didn't. They didn't want the story. Really? They didn't want a story. A man that won a world championship uh, that came back after cancer. Like they didn't want to touch that. I don't understand it. Well, it's a great. I comeback still don't story. understand it to this day. Right. A real and life. I, and I, I just <laughs> yeah, and I, I just don't understand it. Yeah. So, but. Even with the the uh, the uh, 
the ESPYs when they get the uh, the awards of uh, what's the award? The, I just had my man name. Van, uh, I got my man name, the Cancer Award. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I, his I know who you're talking I about. I know it. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I just had it. I just had his name, but that award, it's uh, like I should be up there speaking for that award because I went through it and I overcame something and, and still pushed my way to win a cha- a world championship. Twice. It's not just a U.S. Right? It's not just a U.S. This is the world championship, and uh, for for me to not even be in the limelight or you know, anybody even seeing it, it's, it's sad, but you know, it, it'll come out. Yeah. Well, it's, it's bound to, it's, it's an amazing story. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm yeah. like you, I'm surprised more people aren't familiar with it. Yeah. So do you think it may, maybe matured you as a fighter? I mean, you know, you're, you're a young kid getting out lots of acclaim. And I think fighters as they get older and go through things, you know, they learn, they mature a little faster and they're a little bit more grateful for what they have. And, Maybe work a little harder for it. I, I, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I, I expect that's what it is. Just like George Foreman, after he went through his thing and came back some, you know, decades later, he was a different fighter yeah. and a different person. For sure. It, it definitely changed. It definitely changed the mentality. I mean, because life is short. Uh, I only die once. Uh, you know, people say, we don't, I only live once. No, I die one time. And, that, yeah. you know, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. So you live your life for the moment. You can't live for tomorrow. You can't live for a week. You can't live for a month. Uh, you got to live for that moment. Uh, I rarely plan things because if sometimes plan, a lot of times plans don't go as planned. I mean, you got to really live in a moment. If I if I plan something, it's a couple of days before. It's not going to be a week, a month, or six months before. Like I'm not doing that. I don't even plan trips that long ago. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to plan them probably a few weeks or a month out yeah. and go on the trip because that's how you got to do. You got to live life for that moment. You can't live for six months down the road or a year down the road. You got to live for now. Yeah. Well, having gone through chemotherapy, I would think that the, uh, the uh, physical therapy coming back from a broken leg and arm is probably a piece of cake in a sense. Oh, uh, it was, it, it, you know what? It wasn't easy, but it, it, you know, I made myself do it. Yeah. I pushed through it. I had to, uh, like I said, my bone came on my leg, so I had to Yikes. walk again. Uh, and then my hand, I couldn't even pick up really nothing with my hand. It was just, it was hurting was so right bad. Uh, left hand. Left hand, wow. Uh, I don't know if you can see the scar. Can, yeah, wow. Yeah, right there. Intense. But yeah, the scar right there, yep. So, but, you know, it's like, you know, like I say, you go through trials and tribulations in life, yeah. man, and that's with everything. And you got to just keep uh, going, getting through it and pursuing yeah. what you really want to do in life. And everybody has something that they're supposed to be doing. You just have to find out what it is. True, true, true words. Um, so that was an, that was another 18 month layoff. How long after that before you got your your WBC title shot against Zach Albica? Oh, two, was it 2000? 14, I think it's 2014. I got a title shot to Beka. It was, and then uh, the rematch and, later. And, and, yeah. Yep, in, in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I thought I beat him. I thought I beat him worse that fight than the fight before. Oh, really? I, mean, I, knocked, I knocked the guy down. They took a point from him. So if I, they, they was telling me if I didn't get that done, then I would have lost the fight. It just didn't seem right to me. Mm-hmm. I was pressing the action a little bit more, uh, hitting him with cleaner shots. He was headbutting me. He was hitting me low. But, you know, like I say, everything happens for a reason. So I came out that next fight and, and boxed his head off. I knew I could right. box him, but I just wanted to give the fans something and bang with him. <laughs> Nobody sat there and banged with Saki Albika. Right. Well, he's powerful, but he, an awkward fighter too, right? He is. A, very a different awkward, style. Very awkward. Yep, very awkward. But it's funny how some fighters, you know, that plays to their advantage. Even if they're yep. not technically sound and doing things a little bit odd, it's hard to key into it. And by the time you do, it's like, man, I've, I've dropped a few rounds. Yeah. So what did that mean? The, that first, I mean, that WBC belt is the one everybody wants. That green belt just has that prestige that, hey, I finally made it. What did that mean to you winning that belt? It, it, at that moment, it was surreal because 
everything that I just came back from, uh, everything that stood in my way from stopping me to get that title that I, I barreled through it. I, I got through it and, and, and did what I needed to do to make, even make my grandfather happy. That's what it was about. Yeah. Then it was about just making my grandfather happy, man. Once, once I seen that smile on his face, I put the belt over his shoulder that belongs to him. Yeah. Hey, that that's his belt. Well, it's all about family at the end of the day. Like, like say, I mean, even now you go into the gyms, if the kid's fighting, his mom's usually there to participate. Yeah. The dad's usually a trainer or helping out. It's a family affair. And I mean, you're a great example of that, that it's like, you can't just do this alone. It, was too, it requires no. too much, too much sacrifice, too much um, dedication that it's got to be a, a family affair, a group event. It does. It does. Even with a team, if you don't have a good team around you, it, you're it's destined for failure. Yeah. Uh, and the team has to be close to you. You have to really be close with them guys because they need to know you in and out to know what your good, and your, your weaknesses and strengths are. And that's how my camp is, uh, my people, my, my family and everything. It's, it, 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 we're tight knit. Yeah. When I would think your brother on it, on an even different level that he's, he's in the ring with you. He knows what you're capable of. He knows, you know, he can see it from a fighter's perspective. That has to lend a whole nother, another level of understanding for you having somebody like that talk you through things, you know? Definitely. Definitely. He can see, uh, especially when I'm fighting, he can see things that I can't see outside the ring. Uh, my last fight, he actually, uh, like he, he's seen some, but I seen it too at the same time. And I told him, like, I was going back, I was coming out, uh, going in. It was after the third round, the third round in it. And he said, woo, woo. and I said, I told, I did like that. I said, <laughs> I got it. So if you go back and look at that fight, the first punch I threw, was that uppercut that dropped him? Death of Marcos you Hernandez. Back, Marcos yeah, Hernandez. You go oh back gosh. and look at that. If the first punch I threw was that uppercut, because I knew what it was. I knew he was even even the, like the end of the third round. Like I was just hitting to the body light, and he was just wheezing. Like I'm like, why is he like like he not taking it very well? Okay, and I knew what like, I knew what it was. He started leaning over like this. So he was leaning into the survive. shot and you saw the opening. Yeah. Yeah. It's not gonna he's not gonna survive that. That so was that was a I definite, came out that fourth round and and that was it. All she wrote. That was an amazing highlight reel for you. <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> Thank moment. you. Thank let's you. let's talk about it. another fight that was a close one that probably is very bitter for you, and that's the Badu Jack fight. Because mm -hmm. that was a very close fight. I, I thought it was too uh you know how they say uh, you have to beat the Jamaican convincingly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He didn't. I don't think he did. I don't think he beat me convincingly. Uh, do I take it? Yeah, it's water under bridge. It I is. can't change it. Badu is a great friend. He's a great warrior. I, I know Badu. I, yeah. I, I, I talk to him every time I see him. I mean, we're no animosity or anything, but I just think with champions, you have to beat them, and he yeah. didn't convincingly beat me. Yeah, uh, but like I say, I can't change it. You know, yeah. you take the wins with the losses. You come back, you bounce back. If you don't, you shit. If you yeah. do, you're good. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, Bad Dude's a good guy. No, he, he is. He, he's a hell a heck of a guy, man. I, I like him. He's a family man. And, he is, and that 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 puts a lot of respect in my heart. Yeah. Anybody that can fight through a cut like he had that fight. I mean, you got hats off to the hit to, yeah. that, to fighting through yeah. that because a lot that's of guys a, that go. A, that's a warrior. Yeah, yep, that's a warrior. Um, so what's the, you've had a career that spanned you started pro in two thousand when did you start amateur again? Two thousand and five? I was nine. Oh shit. Is there, is there, I amateur two thousand I don't know. It it wasn't two thousand, it was it was ninety three. Ninety three. I was nine. I was nine years old. Yeah, so ninety three. You've had a career that's spanned three decades. Yeah, that's a long time. That's amazing. So what do you, what do you, I mean, to stay in the sport and go through some of the things you went through, the layoffs, the, you know, decisions, I mean, all that, that some fighters, you know, might not be able to last through. They get discouraged. They, mm -hmm. they uh, give it up. What do you attribute that longevity to? 
just take care of your body. You take care of your body, it take care of you. Uh, and that's what most people don't understand. When you uh, when you get in these camps or even when you're out of camp, you got to stay. You got to do something to stay fit because if you just go and just see a lot of people drinking uh, and partying, you can't do that. You got to you gotta take care of your body. You can ask anybody that I'm around. I don't drink. I don't smoke like because that's going to be here when I'm dead and gone. When I retire, yeah, you can have a drink. You can have a smoke if you want. But right now, I'm focused on this. If you're not focused, you're not giving boxing 100%, you're going, you're going to be able to see it when you get in that ring. Well, there is. After the career is over, there's plenty of time to do all those things, to live yeah. you know, live wild or what do you want to do at that point. Yeah. You, yeah, you can your do future. whatever you want, but you really, it's a one-on-one sport. You don't get a timeout. You don't get a break with this. You get a you get a rest at the end of the round. That's it. Yeah. If you quit, that's it. You can't quit this. How much longer do you see yourself in the sport? Not long at oh. all. Less than a year, probably. Yeah. So if the Caleb Plant thing doesn't happen, who do you got your sights set on? What do you th- what do you think would be next next on in the gate? I have no idea. I haven't even thought that far. Thirty seven years old. I'll be thirty eight this year. Yeah. Uh, a lot of young people in this game, man. Yeah. I want to keep this. Yeah. If I retire right now, I'm good. I'm fine. I just want to, I want one more hurrah. Yeah. Well, I I hope it happens for you. You're a good guy. You're good. You come from a great family. Uh, They're really dedicated a lot of sport and giving a lot back. Um, So we wish you the best in your next bout. And thanks for joining us. And congratulations on the career you've got and the, the career you've got before you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. Anthony, my pleasure. Take care. Thank you. You too. Thank you for watching this episode of Title Unboxed. If you're anything like me, you can never get too much boxing. So if you'd like to watch more episodes, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our Title Boxing YouTube page.